Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our first Vesper service. We'll be doing this Vesper service every fortnight on Thursday at 7 p.m. When I do the service, I'm going to do it in this format. I'm going to have a Bible reading, a little reflection, and a prayer. The reflection I've chosen today and the prayer comes from a book called Facing the Storm by Eddie Askew. It's a wonderful little book. I've used it in services before uh, and I really like the way he writes and I like the prayers that he gives. So this evening's Vesper is based on John chapter 21 verses 1 to 7. The reading um, about the fish, the, the disciples catching the fish uh, a few days after Easter. So I'll read that reading to us. I'll then do our little reflection and then we'll finish with the prayer. As we go through this week by week, if you've got something that you particularly like to, for us to talk about or um, a, somebody you want to pray for in the prayers, just let us know. Send us an email or a message somehow or other. We've got plenty of ways of getting those messages uh, and we'll include them in, uh, in our prayers on the Vespers or on the Sunday service. Here's our reading for tonight. John chapter 21, verses 1 to 7. It's entitled, Jesus and the Miraculous Catch of Fish. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realise that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there, with fish in it, and some bread. On Easter morning, Mary finds Jesus' tomb empty and stands in the garden, weeping for her loss. Jesus comes to her, but she doesn't recognise him immediately. She thinks he is the gardener. A few days later, Peter and some of the other disciples take a boat and go fishing in Galilee. Jesus calls to them from the shore, but they don't realise at first who he is. Two other disciples walking the road to Emmaus meet a stranger. Going with them, he talks, explains and comforts. And again, it's Jesus. I don't know why these close friends of Jesus didn't recognise him straight away. I don't understand what made him different after the resurrection. And it isn't really important that I should. The important thing to realise is that Jesus is unpredictable. He shows himself in whatever way he chooses. Not capriciously, but in ways that startle, puzzle us, surprise us out of our easy assumptions. Ways that widen our awareness. In our insecurity, we try to make rules. This is how Christ should act. This is how the the Holy Spirit is. This is how and how and how. And hard luck the Christian who breaks these rules. But Jesus breaks them all the time. 
He broke the Sabbath rules not to heal the sick. He responded to the need with love, not law. He still breaks them. To tell us that life can't be lived in a self-imposed straitjacket. That he can't be combined within our little limited vision. That life is an unpredictable adventure. But that he is in it with us. Even though we can't see him. Or don't always recognise him. He tells us to look for goodness in unlikely places. To find him in the most unlikely of people. And when we open our closed and timid minds to the glory of his presence, we find him everywhere and in everyone. Let us pray. You ask so much, Lord. Somehow I'm meant to see the invisible. Somehow I'm meant to discern you in the unexpected. And somehow I'm supposed to allow infinity into my life. You offer me eternity, but just the simple, not so simple act of living out today demands all I can give. My little mind asks certainty, the comfort of particularity, of knowing where I am and what I'm meant to do. I seek the refuge of routine, blinking myself in pettiness. My mind can't span the wonder of your love. My little courage can't accept the challenge of your presence. Sometimes I think it's easier to stand outside your empty tomb and weep than look into your eyes and see the resurrection. Lord, let me understand that caution kills the joy of knowing you, that life with you goes far beyond the safe. That I must make the leap of faith into the dark, but making it my senses come alive, emerge, shake off constrictions, unfold their wings and fly. And life enriched, I see your face. In people I have never seen before, I hear your voice in ways I couldn't comprehend. For Easter is every day. Amen. For the rest of the week, this is what's going on. On Saturday morning at 6am, there will be a dawn service a very very short dawn service just the ode and the anthem uh, just the ode the last post and the anthem uh, on sunday morning at 10 50 there will be an anzac day service uh, there will be an anzac day commemoration at the beginning and then sarah uh, preaching for the rest of the service next week on oh no no sunday at noon there is going to be um, a, a youth get together uh, on, on Zoom, led by Sarah. If you want more information, let her know. Uh, next Wednesday, 10 a.m. Bible study. Next Thursday, 7 p.m. Book Club. We're looking at the shack. Um, if you need more information, let me know. Um, but next week is just uh, getting together to see how it will work. And then on the, th the 3rd of May, it's Sarah's induction service. Um, and that will be at 11 a.m. Uh, on Zoom. Two other little bits of information. Um, we are hoping to start a coffee morning, a terbach, little tea type thing. We're looking to start it at noon on Sundays and then at probably 4 or 5 p.m. on Tuesdays. We're looking for expressions of interest on that, and it's basically just going to be a catch-up. People catching up on Zoom, uh, having a cup of coffee and a chat together. We can also do that by phone, so people can phone into the Zoom room. So people that haven't got access to computers can still be contactable by phone. If you can think of people that would fit that category, please uh, let Fred know in the office or let one of the ministers know, and we can add them to the list. Um, that will be, that will start, not, not, 
this week coming next week uh, when we sort of iron out all the details and get that all together. Uh, apart from that, I don't think there's much else until uh, until Saturday morning. So um, I hope you're doing okay. If you do need anything, please get in touch with us. Otherwise, uh, God bless you all and we'll see you on the Sunday morning service.